The City of Irvine is a proud supporter of Curiosity Quest and the effort to keep the environment sustainable for generations to come. Hey there, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Well today, our quest letter came to us from Dina in Anaheim, California. And Dina wrote, Dear Joel, my kids are always asking how do they make fleece out of old plastic bottles? Well Dina, it's because of your kids' curiosity and the fact that you sent us a quest letter that we've come out to one of the world's most eco-friendly companies, Patagonia. Well, we're going to find out how they take going green to a whole new level. So let's get started on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. We're gonna take this plastic bottle, turn it into this material, take this material and make this on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Hey, all right, this is my size here. All right, so I'm up in the design studio at Patagonia with Jen Rapp. How you doing? Good, how are you doing? Good, so tell us a little bit about Patagonia. Sure, well, Patagonia is an outdoor apparel company and we make clothing for sports like surfing, rock climbing, skiing. Okay, so this would be part of what, ski wear or something that like that? That would be surfing lifestyle, wear. surfing, Rock's exactly. Rock on. All right, so now, Patagonia, you know, I understand you guys are as green as it gets. What are we going to be seeing today? Well, what we'll see is the different kind of fibers we use. So we do a lot of recycled fibers, a lot of organic cottons. Lots of things go into our clothing that you would never imagine could. Yeah. Well, our letter today is Dina wanted to know how fleece was made from plastic bottles. And I understand you guys have a process for doing that, right? We do. And back in 1993, we actually introduced it. And we were the first company in the world to ever be able to recycle plastic bottles into fleece. And by doing that, we were able to save over 13 years about 86 million bottles from the landfill. <laughs> what is fleece made out of? Cloth. <laughs> um, sheep. Probably some sort of plant-based material. Liquid. This is like sheep, right? Sheepskin. Sheep wool, fur, some <laughs> goats. <laughs> uh, you yeah. keep going if you want. No, that's good. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I like the colors. All right, so Jim, how do we make fleece from plastic bottles? Well, it's actually really easy. You take a bottle like this that you drink water or soda out of, and you chop it up into little pieces. And when it, once it's been chopped up, it gets melted down and extruded. And by extruded, what you can kind of picture is a shower head and little pieces of fabric coming through the shower head, like a string coming out of a shower picturing head. Picturing it, uh huh. You're picturing okay. it? Yeah. Then, once it gets turned into a string, it turns into this fluffy kind of mess. Okay. Well, we take that mess and we spin it into a fleece. A fleece? It's really easy. So all we have to do at home is take our plastic bottles, shred them up, and push them through our shower head, and then spin it? Theoretically. Theoretically. Yes. So it's simple. It actually is. <laughs> OK. So now, once, how do you put the color in? I mean, how do you get all this color in here? Well, once you get it to this fluffy stage, it's basically treated like a virgin fiber. And we can kind of treat it exactly as we would fleece that was derived from oil, which is what fleece is usually made out. I didn't know that. Yeah, fleece is a petroleum product. 
oh which is why it's so important to now make it out of recycled materials because with the cost of oil, with our reliance on oil, it's really important that we switch to making garments out of trash as opposed to virgin resources. So it's so crazy, just that the thought of saying that, okay, so we're making our clothing out of trash. I know that's right. probably not how you market the clothing, but... It is actually how we market the clothing. <laughs> really? So I'm wearing trash. All well, right. actually, this here is a piece of trash. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see what kind of trash do we have here. Green trash, I You've like that. We've got green trash. And basically the outside of this, this jacket here is made out of recycled soda bottles. The inside, however, is made out of trash. It's made out of things like old office chairs and shower curtains and polyester signage, things that you would never know can be recycled into a new garment. And as technology sort of advanced over the years, we've been able to move from just being able to recycle bottles to now being able to recycle all sorts of trash. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that Patagonia is not only a company, but a region in South America containing both Argentina and Chile? And so what's this little demo thing you have for us here? Well, this shows the difference between plastic bottle recycling and filament recycling. Okay. So the outside of this was done this way, the yeah. inside of this garment was done this way. And it's a different kind of recycling process, and we call it chemical recycling. Would, would you be opposed to me opening these up? No, is go that for okay? it. So we can get a look at that. So this is the old clothing that somebody brought in exactly. several years ago. Exactly, right. and you can see little bits of fleece and little bits of our capoline in there. Capoline, that's a big word for? Capoline is a big word for a long underwear. Long <laughs> Capoline. All right, I didn't know where that was going. So yes, yes. All right, so now the capoline, the long underwear, yes, ha has now been pelletized, just so it's a little bit more manageable. And you can actually see again oh, the yeah. bits of the fabric in there. The secret formula that we're gonna leave out, right? Right. All right. And then from the palletizing, you careful. You got to. Uh oh, that's why it's on tight because Joel's coming. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay, so now that then it's then it goes through its chemical reaction. A chemical change actually happens where the pellets are broken down to the monomer level, Ooh. where it goes back down to DMT. And this is what you get when you create polyester out of oil. Okay. So this is as good as virgin polyester right here. Okay. And, and to get from this to this, is it just the... It's a chemical change. Chemical change. Yes. We're going with that. Chemical change. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this back on because I don't want that to open up. All right, and then from there we go into the... Uh... It gets melted down into little pellets, and the reason it gets put into pellets is simply that it's a lot easier to deal with keep the than that powder. Okay, and then from there we go into the, ah, the shower. Yes. The shower. There Here we, go. we go through the extruding process, and when you feel this, it's really soft. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then hmm. from there we go into the weaving and spinning process, where suddenly you get a Fiber. new garment. Wow. So when you look at a garment like this, a super technical jacket that an alpinist or a skier or a mountaineer would wear. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, an alpinist? What is an alpinist? Someone who lives in the Alps. Yeah. I don't know, someone that goes hiking? Is someone against a uh, pianist. Something to deal with the herder of alpaca. Oh, is that politics? Uh, religion? What, what's an alpinist? An alpinist is somebody that climbs mountains. Wow. Okay. Obviously, I'm not an alpinist. But I pretend to be. Pre oh, okay. Well, that, that, that would require me knowing how to open this jacket here. <laughs> so someone's going to climb a mountain with a jacket like this. Right. Whew, it's getting hotter and hotter in here. Just, uh, all right. So. How's it going down there? there? I'm pretending. That, is that what alpinists do? Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, this is just what they do. So there you go, you've got an extremely technical garment that someone would climb, say, K2 or Mount Everest in. 
and it's made out of recycled materials. This is 100% recycled and 100% recyclable. So let's say you end up tearing it up on Everest, you can give it back to us and we'll make it into <laughs> another garment. Let's just get one thing straight. I will not be tearing this on Mount Everest, <laughs> all right? I mean, that's a, I thank you for the encouragement, but. And so this filament recycling is what allows us to create a garment that's fully waterproof, totally breathable, and it meets all the technical specifications that our hardcore athletes need. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that hand sewing is an art form that is over 20,000 years old? So now this is all the fleece that you guys have here? Yeah, this is a large, large portion of the fleece. There's a lot of it, isn't there? Yeah, now how do you guys come up with like the designs for your jackets? Well, Patagon is special in that we design to a need. Mm -hmm. And most companies design to sell. So let's say a certain alpinist or skier needs a fleece jacket that's going to do X, Y, and Z. We will create a product to meet those needs. So a lot of people want fleece that's breathable, that wicks sweat off your skin, hmm. things like that. So we design to that need. What, wick sweat off your skin? Mm -hmm. Don't know that I've ever heard that term before. What is wicking? Wick, wicking? Wicking? Yeah. Wick. Sounds like whipping. When you wick something? Yeah. And what does that mean? <laughs> Put together. Just a stronger material for sports and whatever else you want to use it for, I guess. Wick wicking? Wicking um, is inserting the wicks into candles. Wicking is actually the process of, let's say you're on a big ski trip okay. and you're sweating a lot. Which are, well, yeah, yeah which, which you might be. Might and be. Uh -huh. <laughs> you're gonna want a piece of material against your skin that's gonna lift that sweat off your skin and put it out into the universe. <laughs> Rather than just sitting there pooling on your skin, getting you all wet, and it might be really cold outside. And it, with our athletes, it can actually be a life saving thing for them. Okay. And is this what this material does? It is wick, what that material does. It does. It wicks and that nice fuzzy surface and the way it's designed helps to do that. Okay. So once you have these these colors and how, what do you, how do you go? Now you have an idea of how you want to make it. Now what? Right. So let's say a designer comes up with a jacket that mm -hmm. we're going to include in the line. Well then we have a pattern designer create a pattern and then it comes down here to this sewing room. Uh -huh. And we don't make any of our products here but what we do make are prototypes. And prototypes are really important to us because our products need to meet those needs that we design for. So we'll sew up to three prototypes for each product that we make and we'll send them out to our athletes in the field. Oh really? Yes. Oh, and okay. our athletes will actually test them for us. Okay, so we're going to get to see what they're making in here today, right? Absolutely, yeah. So we have Kevin here. He's actually sewing up a special board short. And what makes this special is the fact that it's made out of recycled and recyclable materials, like we were talking about just a few minutes ago. No kidding. Yeah. So this is the, the, the trash wear that you're talking about. It is. You will literally be surfing in trash. You know, a pro surfer of ours is going to take this out into the water on like a three week long surf trip and test it out and make sure it works and come back to us with feedback about aspects of the design that work and don't work. So now, does the recycled material hold up like the non-recycled material? It does. It absolutely does because when we look at the recycling process, about halfway through when it goes through that chemical change, it's as good as virgin fiber. Okay. But what's important is that the different fabrications we make out of the recycled materials, we have to make sure in the real world they do perform just like any other material would. So the material feedback we get from our ambassadors on a pair of shorts like this is gonna be just as important as any other feedback they provide us. Tight here, exactly. loose here. Exactly, or okay. it, it, was, it rubbed on my skin wrong, or okay. it rubbed through, or it snagged really easily. So instead of using plastic curtains, you'd have to switch to, you know, billboard signs, Exactly. Right? Okay, gotcha. Exactly. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. The first sewing needles were made of bone or animal horns. All right, so we have the ladies' fleece, and we're in the test lab, right? Yeah. So how do you test this material? Well, there's a lot of different ways we test it. We would test a material for, say, puncture strength. Oh. So we would punch it through, and we would see what strength we would have to use how much weight it would take to actually puncture a hole in this garment. Wow. Now, do the recycled, you know, clothing that you're making from recycled materials, do they respond differently than the regular? 
The goal is to have it not respond differently. The okay. goal is to have it be just as strong and have the exact same quality as a virgin quality material. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Patagonia's founder taught himself how to blacksmith and make climbing gear out of a workshop in his parents' backyard. All right, so what is this test here? So this tests for water vapor transmission. And that's a complex way of saying we test to make sure it's waterproof, but breathable so that your sweat can get out, but rain and snow cannot get in. So when you look here, you see that water's not dripping out. So there, there's a piece of fabric in here. There's a piece of blue fabric in there. Ah, uh -huh. And you can see that when we push a little air through, you can see the bubbles coming out. Yeah. But you don't see water going through. So that's, it's breathing. It's, it's allowing breathing, to breathe. but it's waterproof. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a really important feature for a lot of our products. And when you look down here... I see some water. You see some water, which means this fabric is not doing its job, which means it won't pass our quality standards. Okay, so what do you do at this point? We throw it away. Throw, wow, <laughs> make it right, huh? Yep. Hey, they're serious here at Patagonia. All right. <laughs> All right, so what are the tests that we uh, perform on our materials here? Well, for things like fleece, we're going to really test for pilling. Peeling, is that what it's Peeling. called? Peeling. Peeling, it creates little tiny fuzz pills Ooh. on your clothing. Oh, and like you'll those. notice, yeah, no one does. And you'll notice it happens in places where you're rubbing a lot. So a lot of times when we walk, we go like this, and you'll see pilling along the sides of your garment there. Yeah. So we simulate the rubbing sensation or the rubbing. That's what these machines do right Absolutely. here? Absolutely. So you'll see in here, this piece of fabric in there is uh -huh. just gonna tumble and tumble and tumble up against this sandpaper oh. to create that effect. And we'll see how much a garment pills with the goal in mind of having zero pilling. All right, so break time. So we're in the Patagonia Cafe. So this green philosophy is everywhere here. It's even in the cafe. It is. We also have a real work-life balance here at Patagonia. And we have things like the organic cafe that we're sitting in right now where all the food is organic and it's company subsidized as well. So the company actually pays that premium for the organic food for us so that we don't bear the cost, which is really cool. Then we also, after we eat all of our food here in the cafe, we compost it. And so we have a compost bin here that we then take outside and we use the compost to fertilize our gardens here on campus. Wow. Yeah. That is awesome. That's pretty cool. And all the drinks you sell, and all, like the teas we're drinking and everything, right. all organic. All organic. What does organic mean? Something that doesn't use any chemicals. Natural growing plant. Something that's not chemically induced or changed from its uh, originating form. Homegrown. Plants or uh, something living. Is Organic is, means that something is grown without pesticides or unnatural fertilizers, which is really important because all of these pesticides and chemicals go into our bodies. So if I'm understanding it correctly, if you're not making clothing out of recycled material, the cottons that you're using are... 100% organic, and they have been since 1996. And the way that we got to organic cotton was we did a study of our fibers, and we found out that out of all the fibers that we used, organic cotton was the most polluting. Mm. Mm. It truly is a gnarly fabric. <laughs> wait, 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 let's get that again. It's a what fabric? Gnarly. <laughs> there you go, gnarly. Gnarly fabric. I haven't heard that word about 15 years. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. <All> right. <laughs> yeah, it uses about one fifth of our nation's pesticides. Ooh. So we knew wow. it was critical that we made the switch right away to organic cotton. And our founder, Yvonne Chenard, likes to say he would rather go out of business than use conventionally grown cotton. Wow. Yeah. Wow, okay. All right, so we're going to check out the other green aspects of uh, this company. Absolutely. All right, Let's so, go. so we're done. Break time's over. Let's go. Hey, what are you doing? Come on. Let's go. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Patagonia's employees are currently helping to create a new national park in South America, where nearly 650,000 acres will one day become Patagonia National Park. All right, so Jen, we're out of the Patagonia Cafe, on to the Patagonia Bikes. Absolutely. Patagonia is nice enough to provide us all with these cruiser bikes that we can take for little cruises around town. A lot of us grab our surfboard, jump on the bike, and head down to the beach, which is about a five-minute ride away. No kidding. Yeah, we can also take them to go have lunch downtown or just get out of work for a little while. 
Sure. Now, the, the idea behind this, again, is so that you're not using gas from your car to drive around? It is. It, it's so that we're not using gasoline, and it's also so that we're enjoying work. Sure. It gives us a break. It gives us that sanity we all need when sure. we're working here at Patagonia. Sure. You know, it's funny because I hear, I, I, you know, I read in the paper, I hear on the news that going green or being green has a certain restriction to it. I don't feel that here at all. You don't. You definitely don't feel that. Not only does it not have restrictions, it's actually really inspiring. And you find that in every aspect of your life, you can go green, whether it's riding a bike to work or parking in our hybrid parking spots. We don't have executive parking spots for the cool people here at Patagonia. We have parking spots for people that are driving hybrids or veggie powered vehicles veggie or powered? carpooling. Wow. And then you also see we have our solar panels, which kind of serve as a carport. Not only do they power 20% of our power, they also, as our founder likes to say, keep the bird poop off of our cars. <laughs> They really serve two purposes. Two purposes. And the most important purpose is, of course, the that bird is, proof. The bird proof, 100%. 100%. <laughs> uh, all right, so now, real quick, going back to the uh, car, the carpool in the, that's funny because we pulled up, we said, oh, should we go in the carpool? We were carpool, but we didn't have yeah. a sticker, right? You don't need a sticker. Oh, we didn't need a sticker. No. We could have parked closer. Yeah, a lot of people live up in Santa Barbara or in a different area, and so we encourage everyone to jump in a car together and come down. It's funny mm -hmm. because all of the, the electric cars and the carpool and mm -hmm. the veggie car, you said? Right. One of our friends here has a veggie oil-powered van, and she literally drives around to fast food restaurants and asks them for the oil they throw away at the end of the day. And when you, you can smell her coming, it literally <laughs> smells like french fries as she's driving down the street. Oh my goodness. All right, so tell us a little bit about the building that you guys occupy. Well, we actually occupy several buildings here, and one of them's really special, and it's called the Firehouse Building, and every single thing in that building is eco. Mm -hmm. So whether it's you know bathroom stalls made out of recycled plastics, to non-VOC, volatile organic compound paint. Okay. Everything in that building was designed with the environment in mind. Wow. wow. And Patagonia is also known for not building new buildings. When we get a retail store, a new retail store, we don't come into a mall and build up a new store. We actually take an old building that needs to be renovated and we renovate it using the most green building practices we can. Wow, no yeah. kidding. All right, so now, can we give these bikes a, a spin? Here? Let's give them a whirl. All right, let's go. All right, Ooh, yeah. So did you think when you woke up this morning that you'd be on bikes? <laughs> <laughs> I had hoped. You had hoped, that's good. All right. What is Patagonia? Country? That's my next door neighbor. Japanese flower, maybe? Like, uh, some kind of plant. Is that a capital somewhere? Pandora's box. A salad. All right, so I'm headed down to Patagonia's boardroom. Get it? I like the boardroom a lot. It's a great place to store your surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> you surf? I do. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Do you bring yours too? I bring mine too. I said, now where have you brought, oh, where, where have you brought us to here? Uh, we are oh. at our lovely compost heap. Oh. And all of this food and garbage is from our cafeteria. And what we do is we wait until it turns into a proper compost and then we use it to fertilize all of these plants and trees you see here on our campus. So not only does it save us from putting a bunch of trash in the landfill, it helps keep our plants healthy. No kidding. Yeah. But it stinks. It stinks. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> so when you pull up, uh -huh. if you have a hybrid, you can park up front. Right. But if you don't have a hybrid, you have to park out here. Right. And I bet you these are the last few spots to go, right? Absolutely. You get out of the car, there's <laughs> flies, there's food. But you're doing good for the environment. We are, we are. And Patagonia, not only do we make things out of recycled materials, but being an, an environmentalist and caring for the environment is really a part of the company's DNA. Every sure. year, when we sell those organic garments, when we sell the recycled garments, we give 1% of sales every year back to grassroots environmental organizations wow. that are fighting to keep our environment healthy for children and for our grandchildren and for all the future generations. That is so awesome. Yeah, we've given away $30 million since 1985. Oh my goodness, yep. that is awesome. Yeah. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Over the 30-year life of Patagonia's solar panels, they will have saved an estimated 
5,669,000 barrels of oil, reduce acid rain emissions by 20,945 pounds, reduce smog emissions by 10,053 pounds, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions by almost 4 million pounds. Wow, this is a great example of how something so small can make a huge difference. If there's good waves, Patagonia says go get them. Go get them, huh? Yeah. Do you have any good waves today, do you know? There is. There is. There are little little waves, but they're good. They're, they're good, huh? Yeah. Wow, I wish we had time to surf. Well, let's make time. Is that, oh, wow. <laughs> is that an invitation? It is. <laughs> do you have an extra board? You can borrow one of our extra boards. I don't have a wetsuit, though. Do you have a wetsuit? We do. We make wonderful wetsuits. <laughs> so we're coming here to learn about fleece finding out about your, the, the environmental cause. Right. And then we're gonna go surfing, is that what you're saying? We can. We can. <laughs> All right, so let's go. <laughs> I wanna thank Jen and everybody else out here at Patagonia for teaching us how to make fleece and other products out of recycled material. But more importantly, showing us that going green doesn't have to be difficult, it's a simple way of life. And I especially wanna thank Dina and the kids for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest. Now, if there's something that you're curious about, you gotta let me know. Do what they did. Go to kvcr.org, click on the Curiosity Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And who knows, it could be you that sends us on our next green adventure. Now remember, this is our planet, and it's our responsibility to take care of it. So I'm curious, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. Gotta catch up with Jen now. Woo! I'm coming back. I forgot my wetsuit. <laughs> hey, man, I forgot my wetsuit. It's freezing out there.